Hi everybody, glad to be with you again this week. We're on our second week of Black History Month and we're learning about different Black artists who have made a major impact in the United States. Today we're going to talk about an artist named Jacob Lawrence. Now, the thing I love about Jacob Lawrence, besides his artwork, is how he used his artwork. He used his artwork to tell stories, but not fairy tale kind of stories or fictional stories. He used his artwork to tell the stories of history. Mr. Lawrence created art that told about the history of the African American in the United States. And in particular, today we're going to talk about a series that he created called Migration. Migration means moving from one place to another. And Mr. Lawrence tells the story of how thousands of African Americans migrated or moved from the Southern United States to the Northern United States right after World War I because they were seeking more freedom, more opportunity, and better education for their families. Mr. Lawrence created 60 different paintings in a series that he called Migration. And so we're gonna look at just a few of them and see how he used his art to tell the story of history. But beyond the story, I also want you to look at it as art. I want you to notice the colors, I want you to notice whether he was detailed in his work or if he just used broad strokes. I want you to look at the size of the things that he created. I want you to imagine how he made his work. So let's look at a few pieces together. Jacob Lawrence painted his people migrating from the south to the north. He chronicled their journey on foot and on train. He talked about how they were poor and wanted a better life for their family. He even showed the train stations that were full of people ready for a new life. He painted the buildings of the new cities where they moved and the people who came in droves seeking freedom. He also painted the results of that journey better education for their children. Isn't that interesting? Sometimes we don't even realize that art tells stories, really, really important stories about what goes on in the world. And did you notice the colors? Bold, strong colors, strong geometric shapes, not a lot of intricate detail. We don't see the eyes and the noses and the mouths of the people. We just see really strong shapes that communicate the unity of the people and their journey. Well, he not only painted important pieces of history, but he also painted fun parts of everyday life. And today, we are going to create a piece of art based on one of those paintings. Let's take a look at that one together. This piece is just called Play, and I love it. I love how the people in this painting look like they're having so much fun. I want you to notice the shapes that Mr. Lawrence used. He didn't pay attention to really specific details. We don't see kneecaps and elbows and nostrils, but we see movement and joy and fun, strong shapes and bold colors. Notice how the arms and the legs and the feet and the hands are really just rectangles and triangles. Even the clothing is too. I want you to notice too how the background is soft. See that light blue and that soft brown, but the people are bold and strong, black and red and turquoise and yellow and bright white. So today we're going to create a painting of play like this using some of the art materials that we have at home. First thing we wanna create is our background. So go ahead and grab your colored pencils 
I'm going to do mine similar to Mr. Lawrence's. I'm going to do my sky in a blue, maybe with a little bit of purple. And I'm going to do my ground in brown. And this is a really simple part of our video. Um, all it requires is one squiggly line and some coloring. But I'm going to show you a quick way to use your colored pencils to make this step go faster. First thing we're going to do is draw our horizon line. Remember, that's the line where the sky meets the ground. I'm going to take my brown and I'm just going to draw a wavy line across the middle of my paper. I usually like to color from the top to the bottom so that my hands don't smudge my work. So I'm going to go ahead and do my sky and I'm going to start with blue. And I want you to notice, can you see how my colored pencil is kind of flat and shiny right there? That's because when I did our practice piece, I used a coloring technique that makes it go really fast. So instead of coloring with the tip of my colored pencil, I'm going to hold my pencil like this and I'm going to use the side of my pencil. Instead of coloring like this using the point where I only get that much color touching the paper, I'm going to use the side so I get all of that color touching the paper. Go ahead and color along with me. I'm going to do the sky in blue. I might add a little bit of purple on top and then I'm going to do the ground in brown and both times I'm going to just go left to right so that I don't get too much um, busyness in my background. I'm just going to kind of do big long left to right strokes. Color along with me.
As I begin coloring, I want you to notice that I'm using my marker in the same way that I used my colored pencil. I'm not using the teeny tiny tip of the marker, but I'm using the side of the tip so I can get big, bold strokes. I'm adding some sleeves in places that I hadn't drawn them before. You can do that too. This is your art piece. Oh, did you see me click my marker closed? That's an important step too. We sure don't want these markers to dry out. So grab your markers, color along, make some nice big bold strokes, add some details where you want them. Can't wait to see how colorful you make yours.
It sure was fun creating with you today. I would imagine that you drew some people having a lot of fun too. And I have a challenge for you. I'm wondering if you could be a little bit like Jacob Lawrence. Think about something that has gone on in your own life or that's going on in the world. And I want you to create another piece of art that tells that story. Now, it doesn't have to be a Jacob Lawrence painting. Maybe it's a watercolor, or maybe it's a poem, or maybe you write a song. But could you create art that tells a story too? I would love to see it. You're all such great artists, and I hope that you continue to draw together even while we're apart.